Serving Micronesia since 1938, Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus, home of Guam's first and only lifetime powertrain warranty. Visit CarsPlusGuam.com for details. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant. Serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on primetime, murder suspect Nicholas Wayne Moore posts a $1 million bail. Plus, Governor Lulian Guerrero signs a new executive order that opens the door for inbound travel come July 4th. And this afternoon, the third batch of winners are announced for the Vaccine Win program. Hoffa and good evening, everyone. Murder defendant Nicholas Moore is being released tonight after posting bail. Magistrate Judge Jonathan Kwan imposed numerous conditions that include prohibitions from contacting certain individuals and refraining from drugs, alcohol, and weapons. Tyler Matanani has the latest. Just one day after his magistrate's hearing, the $1 million bail has been posted for 23-year-old Nicholas Moore. Moore is accused of the murder of 27-year-old Michael Castro, who went missing back in October of 2020. Defense counsel Mike Phillips initially requested that the bail be lowered to $100,000, considering his client was labeled low risk by probation and has no prior convictions. And they wanted $2 million, I think, because they were hoping that um, rather than my client having his constitutional right to, to, to be out and presumed innocent and help his attorney, that he would just be locked away, that, that they wouldn't be able to come up with two million and, and so he would sit and languish in, in, the, in the jail cell. Rather than, um, rather than be out. Based on the missing person release, Castro was last seen on October 29th and was operating a beige 2013 Lexus. On October 30th, according to court documents, Nicholas Moore was at his work site early and asked his father to bring him a fresh set of clothes. It's important to note that Nicholas works for Unitech Environmental Group, which is owned and operated by his father, Leroy Moore. Multiple Unitech employees noted that Moore's early report reporting to the work site and need for fresh clothing was unusual. Just days later on KUAM's morning show The Link, Guerrero reported that her son's car was found in Santa Rita, information she found via social media connections. Court documents state that Castro's car was located at the Unitech property. Bullet holes riddled the driver's door and two 45 caliber bullets and suspected blood was recovered from the interior. Officers conducted a search of Leroy Moore's residence and seized a Ruger P90 45 caliber pistol. A ballistics analysis confirmed that the bullets found inside Castro's vehicle matched to at least one of the bullets to the Ruger. A mixture of blood was also found on the slide and trigger guard of the gun, which matched the DNA profiles of three individuals, Michael Castro, Nicholas Moore, and a third party. If you look at the declarations and, and things like that, you see at least allegations of a lot of wrongdoing by a lot of other people. And I haven't heard of those people, you know, being arrested. You just, you just really got to wonder whether or not everybody um, um, that could have been a suspect, should have been a suspect, uh, or investigated, or did they decide, oh, it must be Mr. Moore. From what I've seen, it looks like they decided that's our target, that's got to be him, and so they just focused the investigation on him. And, and that's, in my experience... That's one of the, uh, the more frequent and biggest mistakes that, uh, that law enforcement makes. When asked why law enforcement would specifically target his client and not go after the others, Phillips said that he can't speak specifically on Moore's case, but he did share that based off of his over 30 years of experience, that that means there are deals being made. It's usually the first person in gets the best deal, but, uh, but those are the people that they're relying on for their case. And people that were either involved or people that were, were selling drugs. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matsunani. And the court ordered that Moore be placed under house arrest and subject to electronic monitoring. He was also ordered to have no contact with any witnesses involved in his case, not including his parents. However, he is not to discuss any of the cases with them. A preliminary hearing is set for July 19th at 4 p.m. In other news, Governor Leon Guerrero announced today that Guam has reached a new milestone in the COVID vaccination effort, a 75% adult vaccination rate. 
As a result, she has signed a new executive order that essentially throws the door wide open for inbound travel. Effective July 4th at 12.01 a.m., all passengers entering Guam with a negative PCR test 72 hours prior to arrival are exempt from quarantine. This is in addition to the current policy that enables all vaccinated travelers to enter Guam without quarantine. Her goal is to reach herd immunity with an 80% vaccination rate by July 21. Also today, the governor extended the public health emergency for another month till July 31st. Guam will remain in pandemic condition of readiness three. The executive order also notes that the moratorium on foreclosures and evictions is lifted effective tomorrow, July 1st. And it's that time of the week again when two lucky winners take home a brand new car or $10,000 in cash. KUAM's Adriana Cotero was at Adloop where earlier today the governor announced the latest vaccinated winners in her vaccine win incentive program. We are now at 75.2% of eligible adults and over for vaccination. And I want to um, do that because I want to bring us back to some normalcy in our lives here on the island. The island has reached 75.2% of the adult population fully vaccinated. That means we are just 5% shy of reaching Governor Lulian Guerrero's goal of 80% our herd immunity by Liberation Day. In order to meet this goal, Gov Guam is enticing the community to get vaccinated for a chance to win $10,000 in cash or a brand new car. Surprised to hear his name chosen was 63-year-old Peter Torres, who was taking home the $10,000 this week. He received his first shot of the Pfizer vaccines on May 29th and his second dose on June 18th. Torres was joined with his wife, Ruby, to receive his winnings. Very surprised when I got that call this morning. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please get vaccinated. And the winner of a brand new 2021 Red Kia Soul, valued at $19,995, was Lucille Mariano, who just celebrated her 75th birthday last week on June 22nd. This is a quite a big birthday gift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mariano received her first Moderna dose on February 27th and the second dose on March 12th. Mariano and her husband say this new car will make a difference in their life as they've been without a means of transportation for some time now. We have no vehicle now. Our car that my son provided us is in, in the mechanic already a month ago. And we came down with that jeepney. The jeepney over there. We came down with that, hoping you bring us here. Winners are chosen every Wednesday until July 21st. There's still a chance to enter the incentive program. All you have to do is get fully vaccinated and register on the GVB website. That's visitguam.com backslash vax. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. Meanwhile, COVID-19 vaccination clinics resumed today. KUAM's Isaiah Uggen spoke with some residents to see what prompted them to join the vaccination. We made our way over to the observation area of the clinic at the UOG Fieldhouse where those vaccinated are observed for a time span of 15 to 30 minutes to see if they have any negative reactions to the COVID vaccines. While speaking with residents, they shared that they were unsure about getting the vaccine but saw the importance of receiving the shots. 23-year-old Kiana, who is a Dededo resident, received her second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. With the vaccine made available to her since late March, she shared that she was initially hesitant to get vaccinated against the virus. In a sense, I mean, I breastfeed, so I was worried about if it would affect my son. Um, but with, you know, talking to family about it, it made me more comfortable with doing the vaccine. As a single mother to one boy, Kiana encourages the community to get vaccinated. I would honestly just say take the chance. I mean, I, I've heard a lot about it. Um, I have been told different symptoms they get after the second dose, but definitely if it does protect you and your family, it's best to get it, especially if you have kids. 28-year-old Carrie Taylor of Dededo is a nurse and admits she too was afraid to get the COVID vaccine. I was at first skeptical about the vaccine since it doesn't have any long-term trials or anything like that known. Um, but the other day I was eating a can of Vienna sausages and I'm like, if I can eat Vienna sausages, I can get the vaccine. 
With the Delta variant on the island, Taylor urges the community to get the vaccine. Just do it. It's for your health and it's for the community as well. Paul Ojigo received dose one of the Moderna vaccine. The 29-year-old says that he was too lazy to get vaccinated. He said that he plans to register for the governor's Vax to Win incentive program and is looking car. forward to winning yeah. something. That car would be nice, yeah. Any specific kind of car you're looking for? Uh, mainly if they had a Nissan available, yeah, that's fine. 13-year-old Curtis Sabang of Manilao said he is feeling okay after he received the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine. He shared the same sentiments of Taylor and Kiana. Just don't think about it too much. Joint Task Force 671 Public Affairs Specialist Janine Guzman said that clinics have been steady at the field house and the average of people getting vaccinated at Operation Liberate Guam is 300 to 500 per day. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahu C. Isaiah Uggen. It would be one of the single largest developments in GovGuam history. Discussion began today on a bill to authorize the funding for a $1 billion medical center of excellence. The governor has right. pledged to use $300 million from American Rescue uh, Plan funds to build a campus that would include a new hospital, public health facility, Speaker? and behavioral health and wellness facility. One of the key questions is where would such a facility be located? Hospital Administrator Lillian Posadas reiterated her preference for land in Mangilao known as Eagles Field, where there is adequate space of more than 100 acres. Really, in actuality, it really is better M much more safer and more practical to then have the healthcare campus at the Manila field that we can accommodate all three healthcare uh, major healthcare agencies in addition to having incorporating DISIT with us and you know perhaps even a veterans wing so really it, it's a more advantageous and more practical more realistic and more beneficial for the island of Guam to have it in the Manila plus it is centrally located Gita is the lead agency working on the financing for the project. They would develop a leaseback arrangement with a private project developer. The bill by Senators Joe San Augustine and Tina Munya Barnes proposes to spend up to $35 million a year to cover the debt service. Senators will resume with another round of questioning of the administration panel tomorrow. And federal pandemic unemployment assistance is scheduled to dry up by the first week of September. And thousands of people are still expected to be out of work. But there's a new program set to launch that will provide subsidies to local companies so that they can hire more employees. Here's more on the Business Para Itautau program. The subsidy program was first announced by the governor at an economic forum last week. Labor Director David De La Sola provided more details during a presentation before the Chamber of Commerce. If you hire an unemployed person, and it doesn't have to be PUA or because of COVID, any unemployed person, we will subsidize you at $9.25 an hour for the first 480 hours, which comes out full-time three months. This is for permanent employment. I don't want you to hire and then get rid of them. That's not what this is about. Funding will be made available for both small and larger businesses. De La Sola says they're still working on details such as how to equitably distribute the subsidies so that, for example, a few hotels don't get the bulk of the money by hiring hundreds of workers. The governor liked this idea, but like anything else, she's being inundated with a lot of different ideas. This is one of her ideas, so I feel very comfortable that we're going to get some funding. So how much funding, I'm not sure. I asked her that I'd like to help about 5,000 to 6,000 people. That comes out to about 24 to $30 million. He says they're also deciding whether to advance the money or reimburse employers. I know everybody likes to get it ahead of time. That kind of opens up the fraud a little bit more. I'm going to hire three ghost employees, you know, I don't like to think that, but learning from PUA, that is a reality when it comes to the smaller businesses. He says the first payouts in the Business Para Itautau program could come by October. And we'll be back with more news right after this. Do you feel like you're missing out on something? Make life more rewarding with Pacific Points. Earn and redeem points for bill rebates and free load at ITE, discounts on fuel at Shell, vouchers at Foodies, 
and United Mileage Plus Miles. You can even pay with Pacific Points at it &E, Shell, and Foodies. Pacific Points. Do more, get more. Social distancing may be the new norm, but connection will always be our tradition. Through good times and tough times, we remain connected with you. Mass may be the new fashion, but protection will always be our style. You can always count on us to protect the things that matter the most. Sanitizing may be the new routine, but caring will always be our practice. We care about your loved ones and the things you value the most. And as we welcome our new normal, one thing remains certain, we will always be here for you. We're open and ready to serve you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Bun, mayo, chicken, pickle, bun. Bun, pickle, Bless mayo, me. No bun. The Naked Chicken Chalupa, only at Taco Bell. Half a day. As we look ahead to a brighter tomorrow, Matson's commitment to Guam and Micronesia remains stronger than ever. While the world around us is ever-changing, what remains unchanged is our commitment to you, our customers, and the island communities we serve. Shipping is what we do best, and serving our community is at the heart of everything we do. But we don't do it alone. This is why we support organizations that make caring for the people and the environment a top priority. We know that many count on Matson's lifeline services in the Pacific. And that's why we continue to work hard to ensure that our shipments remain on time all the time. Matson recently added another Aloha class vessel to our schedule. We now have two of Matson's largest and fastest ships serving Guam from the U.S. West Coast and Hawaii. With our new state-of-the-art vessels, we stand ready to support the region's economic recovery. Thank you for the privilege of serving you for the last 25 years. And you can count on Matson to be here for the next 25 years and beyond. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital today on KUAM.com. Welcome back. About 45 nurses at the Guam Department of Education will be receiving a much-deserved pay increase. GDOE Superintendent John Fernandez says it will be a 15% adjustment to their base salary and then 10% differential pay depending on their position. Fernandez says not just the nurses are happy, so are all employees, as the nurses have been working tirelessly throughout the pandemic. When we saw the differential, we wanted to make sure we understood whether or not that would pose an issue of nurses trying to leave DOE uh, to go to the hospital or public right. health, because we know all, all the agencies need help. But, you know, those those types of things matter uh, in terms of compensation when you when you're competing for professionals, um, you know, who have to be trained out there in, on the front lines. Uh, but again, overall, we're thankful to, to see that happen so quickly. Uh, sometimes, sometimes these issues get talked about for a long time yeah. and nothing happens. Uh, it was good to see that. GDOE is in communications with DOA, BBMR, and the governor's office regarding the remaining costs for the current fiscal year, which will determine how and when the nurses will get paid. I believe it's, if it's less than 100000 or around 100000 um, to get from the August to the end of the, the fiscal year. And then we, we still have our budget hearing and, you know, our FY22 budget to, to get done. Fernandez adds that the board recently amended the FY22 budget request. It will cost nearly $900,000 on an annual basis for the nurses, and the department wants to ensure that amount is reflected in the budget. DOE's budget hearing is set for July 15th. And Umatic residents will soon have a newly renovated baseball field. Guam Housing and Urban Renewal Authority Executive Director Ray Taposna said in an interview on the link that 72% of the project is completed. However, he says the contractor Infratech hit a hurdle. The Umatic baseball field, unfortunately, it's, it's like nearly complete, but the contractor is um, challenged to, um, because he's lost a lot of his uh, skilled labor. So we're about... 79% uh, complete. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't seen a lot of activity in the last uh, couple of weeks, but uh, we're on that. 
He added that if they pick up new employees, the project can be completed in three months. Otherwise, it may take up to six months to finish. The project is funded through the Community Development Block Grant at a cost of about $700,000. And the GCA Trades Academy has a brand new permanent home. A ribbon cutting ceremony was held at Tizen officially opening the training facility. The academy was founded in 2006, having trained over 3,000 students in elect electrical, plumbing, carpentry, HVAC, construction, welding, and more. There are 16 classrooms available at the new facility offering various courses. GCA Board of Trustees Chairman Bill Beery thanked Education Director Herbert Johnston for having a major role in the development. Over 2019 and here we are with a brand new facility and uh, personally I want to thank Herbert Johnston for all of his hard work and efforts coordinating and everything like that and of course EDA for the financing behind it but all in all, Bert is the show the most sweat and tears on this one. So thank you very much. The Board of Trustees was joined by Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tenorio for this morning's celebration and they toured the facility. They were also all present for the groundbreaking ceremony that was back in 2019. And United Airlines announced today that it will be adding 270 new aircraft to its fleet and 25,000 new jobs over the next five years. In a news release, the airline said it will add 200 Boeing 737 MAX and 70 Airbus A321neo to its fleet. United will also retrofit 100% of its remaining narrow-body fleet to, quote, transform the customer experience and create a new signature interior that will increase the overall customer experience. Premium seats will be increased by 75% per North American departure. And the total number of seats across its domestic net network will grow by almost 30% per departure. Combined with the current orders, United expects to add more than 500 new aircraft or about one new plane every three days in 2023 alone. Time now for regional headlines. Here's KSPN2 News. Hoffadades and Tito Guam. Here's what's making headlines in the CNMA. The U.S. Customs and Border Protection, along with the Commonwealth Ports Authority, announces the implementation of Simplified Arrival Process, which uses facial biometrics to replace the manual document check. This touchless process provides travelers safety, security, and a good experience. Now, when travelers arrive at the Saipan International Airport, they will pause for a photo at the primary inspection point. CBP's biometric facial comparison will then compare the new photo of the traveler to a small gallery of passports and visas. And if a traveler cannot be matched to a photo on record, they will proceed through the traditional inspection process. If there are travelers who wish to opt out of this new process, they can notify an official and present the valid travel documents. As of now, there is no simplified exit process, so travelers are encouraged to continue to bring their travel documents to the Sinemai airport. Since the Sinemai is currently not operating with regular flights, this was a great time to improve the facility and be ready when we open back up again. The Saipan and Northern Islands Legislative Delegation unanimously passed the legislation that will supply thousands of dollars to 12 agencies and nonprofit organizations. Representative B.J. Atal. The funding source comes from Public Law 20-59, which is the obligations of the central government that's owed to the 3rd Senatorial District under the within grade increase payments during the 90s and early 2000s. The, the third senatorial district used up its local funds to pay with great increases for employees in the third senatorial district. So those monies are being paid back. The third senatorial district received $560,000 from the 2020 collection. So in fiscal year 2021, those funds were suspended. So we were able to get the additional funds that were collected in 2020 to be distributed out. The money will be going to agencies that service scholarships, sports, recovery, and much more. We gave $100,000, approximately $100,000 in addition to SHEFA uh, for the uh, scholarship program. We also gave money to the fire station for the north side for the blueprint payment, the Saipa Mayor's Office for the operations, uh, Saipa Little League. We also gave money to the Morales Racing Association, 
uh, board of parole. Um, we gave 15000 to the museum to assist them with their operations down there. $25,000 to a new organization that's going to help a lot of our Hope Recovery uh, uh, participants and the drug court participants. So there's another outlet for them to to hopefully stay positive and you know continue the fight against the addiction and be a uh, part of this community. An additional twenty-five thousand dollars to an imposse, ten thousand dollars to the Fishermen's Association, uh, twenty thousand dollars to the Women's Association, and thirty-five thousand dollars to the Micronesian Legal Services to help them with the indigent populations on legal services. The delegation tries to accommodate every agency's budget requests but it always depends on the annual collection. Sometimes we can't give them everything that they've, they've requested for, but anything that we can to distribute and help the various entities, we do that as much as we can. For more news, please visit SaipanTV.com. For KSPN2, I'm Sally Limis. Sports is next. Don't go away. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. KUAM News, in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau, brings you the Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase. Look out for this powerful symbol for visitors, island residents, and industry workers alike, as it represents establishments with a consistent global commitment to safety practices. Stamped with approval by the Guam Visitors Bureau and the World Travel Tourism Council. Every Monday on KUAM News, we'll feature a different local business who's taken the Safe Guam and Safe Travels pledge to maintain health and safety standards to get Guam back on track. Log on to visitguam.com to see how your business can receive the designation, what businesses in our community are Guam Safe certified, and have the WTTC Safe Travel certified. Mobile offers a new and convenient way to fuel your vehicle. Pay gas and go. No need to line up inside the store. Press preset. Enter whole dollar amount without decimals. Press loyalty ID and enter your mobile number or insert smiles card. Insert and remove payment card or tap contactless credit card. Begin fueling. And don't forget to grab your receipt. Pay gas and go. It's that easy. We. We won't. We will wait. We will wait. For someone to come. come save us. We won't wait for the waters to be cleared. We won't just wait to breathe clean air. We won't wait to uplift our lives today. And to embrace our now for better. We dream. We dare. No holding back. We go for it. Because tomorrow, for us to create. For tomorrow, we won't wait. UAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. I'll get to some women's soccer and rugby news for you in just a bit. But first off, some GML baseball from the Paseo Stadium. Check it out. The Junior Nationals improved to 3-1 and one in the GML season after a walk-off win over the Aganya Heights Cougars. Nolan Cruz picked up the win, pitching the Nats to the 9-8 victory. Cruz finished the game with four strikeouts. Franklin Annette Jr. was 3-4 for four at the plate with two runs. Tyler Santos was 3-6 for six with two runs and an RBI. Teammate Ricky Leon Guerrero and John Sablon both drove in three runs each. Starting pitcher Andre Camacho recorded three strikeouts.
Cougars player Aiden McDonald finished the game two for five with two runs and an RBI. Napu San Miguel led the Cougars in the loss with three RBIs. Ray Quintaniza added another two in the losing effort. Again, your height starting pitcher Kyle Hines added three strikeouts to his season total. The Junior Nationals hit the field on Thursday at 7 p.m. at the Paseo Stadium against the Jotnia Redhawks. GML standings, the Rays are in first with a record of 4-0. The Dodgers are second at 3-1. After being away from the sport for over a year, 16 teams in the Guam Football Association Women's Recreational League and the Docomo Pacific Soccer Moms League finally took to the pitch on the opening day of their respective leagues at the GFA National Training Center. Both leagues were set to kick off its 2020 spring season in late March last year, but the COVID-19 pandemic halted all league play and eventually canceled the team's season before it began. We were so excited to finally come back. It's been a while since we played, said Risa Sato, who plays for the Tumon FC in the GFA Women's Recreational League. We had first game jitters, of course, and it was really hot, but it was fun. We've been looking forward to this day for a long time and also for all our upcoming games. Sato went from joining the Women's Recreational League to try playing the sport for the first time about five years ago to hat trick hero as Tumon FC settled for a 4-4 draw with the quality distributors Momsters. In rugby news, Notre Dame rugby player Michaela Toigui wrapped up a two-week residency at the American Pro Rugby Training Center held in Little Rock, Arkansas. Atoigui and 12 other girls from across the nation lived and trained together as a team during their stay. The tournament was used as a scouting event with several collegiate coaches in attendance. Keep a lock to KUAM Sports for the interview with Michaela. Well, that's going to do it for sports. Did We're you back right after this. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. For the difference.